would you pay £100 to be able to park for four hours in the King's House Hotel car park? Because that's what's happening right now. The King's House Hotel was made famous by a load of social media videos going out about deers that were just dead friendly around here. You could near enough hand feed them. And people were coming up and sitting in the car park for three, four, five hours, all day, all night, just to be able to see these deer. They weren't spending any money in the actual hotel. So they've brought out a new legislation which has just been released on their Facebook page between, I think it's 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., you could pay £20 to be able to park for up to four hours. Between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., you're only allowed to park for four hours. There's no overnight camping, and it's going to cost you £100. Now, there is ways of getting around it. You can go in, and they'll happily accept you as a customer, either staying in the hotel, going to the bar and restaurant, getting some food. I'm here right now, just as a stopover to get my lunch. Went in the little cafe, and I was speaking to her about it. And do you know what? I think it's a good idea. She was showing me loads of pictures of the helipad for the mountain rescue. They couldn't land because cars had parked on there. It's always been a free car park where you can come, have a quick bite to eat, and then move on further down into Glencoe. You've got some cracking views, and the deer do come out to say hi. But people have abused it, so it's now gone. And let's face it, it's their car park. It's not a free tourist attraction. So in this video, we're going to be road tripping from Glencoe up to the Isle Sky, taking in all the natural beauties along the way. It's going to be absolutely epic. First things first, we're going to leave the King's House Hotel car park after our lunch, head down in towards Glencoe. You just wait until you see some of the views and the scenery that we've got to go through. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And plus, I've never been further north than Fort William or just around the corner. So it's going to be a new experience for me too. You're going to get raw emotion. It's going to be mental. Some not so good sights. I mean, Jimmy Savile was old houses down here. Just look at that for the view down into the Glencoe Valley. That is absolutely mind blowing. We're coming up to the Three Sisters. That looks absolutely, I, the words can't describe it. It's just breathtakingly beautiful. It's so dramatic and just amazing. But by God, does it look busy up here. Something tells me when I get up into sky, it's gonna be mental busy up there too. I think there's a cracking little viewpoint just down here. Let's see if we can get into it. Uh, no, that's full. It's all good, there's a few more further down the road. Let's hope we can try and get into one of them. Just down here, and this lay-by on the right-hand side is closed. Let's try and get in on the left. This is the meeting of the three waters. Can we get in? Uh, I'm gonna try, oh yes. This is where three waterfalls meet into one plunge pool. All the rain off all these mountains, all into one pool. I've always just stood on that bridge to get my pictures, but I've seen so many people come walking up here to have a go. So I thought I'd come for a walk up. The weather's beautiful, so why not? Oh, oh, oh I don't want to get too close to the edge, but here we go. Are you ready? Ooh. You've got one waterfall coming down there, one coming from down there, and there's one from just down here as well. If you follow the rivers up, just like those people up there, they're actually a little plunge pools all the way along the river. But that's the big one all the way down there. From the bridge, this is what it looks like. It's well nice, isn't it? Proper, proper nice. Just coming up on the right-hand side, you can see that white building. I'll go a bit slower. You can probably see some of the actual writing that's on that wall. Some of the graffiti that the people have left on there. It's a diabolical place, but guess what? You will not believe how many different times people have put planning permission in to get that knocked down and changed into something else, anything else. But no, it's a listed building and apparently it's got to stay there. But there is a glimmer of hope. That's been going on now for like 40 odd years or however long it's been. The glimmer of hope is there is a planning permission thing in at the moment and it's looking very positive for that one. Basically just to, again, to keep it looking natural, totally flatten it, clean it all off, and then rebuild on top of it, but keeping it within standard to every other building that's around. Just look at that up there, how magical is that? But if I were you, I'd just get used to the fact of me going, wow, look at that, isn't that magical? Wow, look, do you know what I mean? It's one of those road trips, this road, the A82 through Glencoe, blows my mind no matter how many times i come down here no matter whether i come down in a camper van a motorbike a truck it just blows my mind every single time because i'm going sky i've never been there before don't know where the garages are so i may as well fuel up while i can 
And we'll just zip that straight up. Shut that. Uh, 58 quid. That's a full tank, so that should do me for around about 400 miles. I'm gonna have a quick nip over towards Fort William and then slowly pass through there, stopping off at a few different viewpoints on the way, heading up towards Sky. Why am I wearing sunglasses when it's like raining? Well, that's, how can it still be dead bright and raining at the same time? <laughs> I can't wait to get over to Skye. There's waterfalls that run off cliffs into the sea. Sometimes when there's a big wind, the waterfall goes back up. It's quite amazing, that is. Then you've got stuff like the wildlife. You can go up onto Neast Point, which gives you a cracking view of the sea. That's the place where you're most likely to see like minke whales, basking sharks, dolphins. That'll be absolutely amazing. We're gonna have cliffside park ups. It's just gonna be absolutely breathtaking. I really hope it lives up to my expectations. I really do. Just pulled over for a second to let a car, I was stuck behind a car for about 20 miles and it was frustrating me a bit. So I just let him go, I've pulled over, but this gives me a good shout to show you Loch Lehenny. I think that's how, oh, I think that's how it's pronounced, but just look at how beautiful it is. <laughs> Again, I said it, look how beautiful it is. <laughs> There's seals and everything in there. I took a boat cruise once with Danielle and we actually saw all the seals messing around. It was beautiful. They got like salmon farms out there and everything. If you ever get a chance to do a river cruise around there, it's called the Seal Tours and you get it down in Fort William and it takes about two hours, but it does like a massive circular all the way around Loch Lahinney. You can see deer over the other side, big stags. You can see the seals that are down on the rocks down here. It's just really, really good. I don't know whether it's cheap or not. It cost us 50 quid for two people for a two hour cruise around the lock. I thought that was quite a good value and it really was actually quite good. There it is, driving along the banks of Loch Lahenny. You know when someone says, I know a spot and it's normally not that great or it's a hidden one that's like, wow, well this is neither of them, but guess what? I do know a spot. Cracking view of Ben Nevis if the clouds clear and we've got the boat to Cole and the Caledonian Canal. We're only going to spend 10 minutes here just because I want to show you the boat with the cracking view behind of Ben Nevis. Yeah, I definitely know a spot. There's the van parked behind. There's the Caledonian Canal with Loch Lenny over there and Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the UK up there. Granted, it's currently in the clouds, but if you wait till you see what else we've got. Let's see if we can get over the lock. It looks like a couple of boats are coming through it as we speak, but there is a path going over. Let's go. Ah, yes. Ooh three at a time. That's the Caledonian Canal runs from Inverness down to here. Through a little cut out in the trees, the wind's picking up. Just look at that. We've been nervous up in the clouds, but still, wow, that is insane. It's the first time I've seen it without kids jumping up all over it, but still, it's quite cool, isn't it? It was so nice and peaceful. Just sat there enjoying the peace and quiet, watching the boats come through the locks. Then the noise changed dramatically for the better. <laughs> Another great asset to the Highlands is the Jacob by train. This runs over the Harry Potter Bridge, the Glenvidden Viaduct. It's fascinating. Ooh, parts of the Ben are just coming into view out of the clouds right now. What a way to spend a good half an hour just watching the boats come through, the trains, watching the clouds move over Ben Nevis. There's a commando memorial about 20 minutes away. I'm going to nip down there. That's on the way to where we're going. And yeah, I still don't know where I'm going to sleep tonight. There was a lovely lady that came up and spoke to me. Apparently, she got her and a fella watched me on YouTube. That's what I'll call I'm Workshop for that. If you're watching this, stick a little comment down below just so I can keep an eye out for your name. All I'm doing is zooming into Google Map on the road, going across it and going, oh, what's that? And just going down there to have a look. That's the freedom you've got when you're doing a road trip like this. And then you never know what kind of signpost you'll see on the road and go, oh, I'll just turn into there. Oh, wow, is that it? That lo looks, the view is going to be amazing behind this. Oh my God. What? Oh, the Nevis range looks, there's, oh, there's still snow up there, there's ice, this is, oh, yes, this looks breathtaking. Oh my god, are you ready for this? Like, there's a mountain piece up there, and it looks like it's always been in the shade, because it's still frozen. The Commando Memorial, definitely come and pay this a visit. Wow, but just look at the view, all frozen up solid up there still. That's your Nevis range over there. Ben Nevis still in the clouds. In memory of the officers and the men of the commandos who died in World War II. Oh, the country was their training ground. Thank you, lads. And ladies, because let's face it, the ladies were just as important. This is the area of remembrance. So I'm going to leave you for a second. Bloody hell. 
when I come in 10 minutes ago it was dead. Ooh, that was eye opening, really eye opening. There were memorials not for corpse or anything like that, for individual people, old and new. 22 year old kid, 22 year old kid killed in Afghanistan. 2006 so thank yeah it it is what it is not nice all we can do is be grateful for the guys and girls that are serving for our country I'm going to get all these names absolutely ruined and proper wrong Lock Locky Viewpoint 12 minutes away, let's go. Welcome to the furthest I've ever come north and for every minute that passes, I'll be going a further mile north. Not a bad little viewpoint. There's the van. Woof. There is Lock Locky. How cool is that? But do you want some interesting facts about Lock Locky? It follows a nearly direct line between the whole of Scotland, starting down at Loch Lenny, down there, Loch Lochie here, Loch Ness further up, and it completely divides the Highlands from the South Highlands, I would guess. It follows a major geological fault line. So see all these mountains just here? Over there, since the Bronze Age, they have moved 200 kilometers that way. I only know that because it said it on the board back there. And it's called the Great Glen. Don't know about you, but I find that quite fascinating, to be fair. I mean, literally all these mountains were once 200 kilometers that way. That means the top end of the highlands is basically constantly moving down. Next stop is about 22 minutes down the road, uh, West uh, Gary, West Gary Glen viewpoint, another viewpoint. Lock Locky is just beautiful. Look at it, the mass expanse of just water. I mean, that's salt water because it's part of the Great Glen and it divides the two, but wow. Love having a quick glance at those notice boards and reading about it, just, just vaguely. Just enough to make myself sound a little bit smarter on camera. <laughs> there's a sign, Glengarry Viewpoint, and there's a load of stickers on it. <laughs> it's my turn to jump a sticker on it. Let's see, where can it go? There's loads up there. Is there anybody that you guys actually know up there? Oh my God, there's absolutely loads. How am I supposed to find a spot? Uh, right, I'm sorry, but I'm probably going to have to cover somebody else's. Look, dude, you've, there you go. <laughs> Get in there. Wow, there's loads. But let's check out this viewpoint, because from what I can see driving up, we're high, but I don't think we're a viewpoint high, or everything else around us, like all the trees and stuff are higher. But I don't know, we'll go check it out. There's a stone over there. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but I can't really see much. Then again, all it looks like steps. Um... Uh, no, no, not today. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. A little salmon farm going on. Loch Gerry. Next stop, you'll never guess what it is. It's another viewpoint. <laughs> I'm just following Google Maps and seeing what it pins up on the route and just going on it. This one is Loch Clawney. Loch Clawney viewpoint, 12 minutes. I just had to pull over and show you that view. I think Google Maps kind of duped me a little bit. I, I went 300 yards down the road and there was another viewpoint and it was absolutely breathtaking. It was full of vans, so I couldn't really pull in, but it was beautiful. Okay, I've done it again. I pulled over before I should have done, but there's a path there. So I'm gonna go up just a little bit and show you the view behind the van. It's cool. Are you ready? Are you steady? I'll start over there. I mean, oh, just look. Oh, just what? <laughs> I'm proper loving this. This is absolutely awesome. I need to stop doing this, pulling over into random spots because I'm getting hungry and I'm still about 50 mile away from sort of the area that I want to park at tonight. <laughs> God, this is awesome. Now here's one for you. Lock Clawning. That's what this one's called. It's absolutely mind blowing. And it looks like you can easily get down. So I'll show you the dam that's that side too. There's your dam wall just down there. It looks pretty clear water looking at it down there. But wow, that is mind blowing. I think this is actually a reservoir, but it's normally like all the way up here. I only say that because there's a dam wall. <laughs> can you guess what the next stop's gonna be? You'd be wrong, it's not a viewpoint, kind of. It's a waterfall. I don't think it's a big one, but it's a uh, Estana. I can't pronounce it. 17 minutes away. Promise, I'm not gonna stop in between. 
17 minutes away. That's it. Just look at that for a view. How many times have I said that in this video now? <laughs> it looks medieval. That's what it is. I've been trying to put my finger on it. This is how I imagine medieval times to be. I mean, obviously a little bit more smoggy and stuff like that, but and without this obviously smooth road, it's just, oh, I've got to say it again. It's absolutely breathtaking. This is the A87. It's absolutely beautiful. I missed the waterfall. <laughs> I was too busy gawking at the view and then it just went past me. Looked down at me, sat down and it went, uh, turn around in seven mile and go, no, not today, mate, not today. So I'm going to make a beeline for Sky and try and find somewhere to pull up on the way because I've just checked out the castle and you've got to pay to park and then pay to go and visit the place. So I'll probably get some footage of it if I go past it or whatever, but we need to try and find somewhere to park up between here and Sky. I've just seen a sign that says feral goats for two mile. <laughs> I'm trying to find a spot that's not a lay-by on the side of the road, not a viewpoint where cars are going to be pulling in all night. To be fair, there's not that much traffic out on the road, but I know for a fact that trucks, they start early round here. Preferably not a lay-by, but if I have to, I have to. We've got about 20 minutes until we get to the bridge just before getting onto Sky. So we'll see how it goes. To be fair, I might actually get the ferry back over to mainland when I come back over. I don't know. That's in a different video. That's the next one. I'm looking forward to parking up and getting some food, but I don't know what to actually cook. I'm in a bit of dilemma, so to speak. I went about 10 miles and I finally found like a pull-in lay-by thing. Everywhere that I passed, and I'm talking 10, 15 places, was full. But I have pulled into this spot. Now, this is the only spot that was available in this big lay-by because there's vans in front and behind and cars for B&Bs. We do have a problem. But do the problems outweigh the benefits? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Number one, that's basically the sea. So I can like get the binoculars out, try and keep eyes out for like, I don't know, dolphins and seals and stuff like that. But I am pretty close to a road that is only 40 mile an hour. But there's a big problem that's not quite a problem just yet. If we step outside, cracking view, like banging view. Down there you've even got the sky bridge. But that. I'm parked right next to the litter bins. Wouldn't be a massive issue. But it says, for general waste and dog waste only. What do I do here? I'll figure that out after some food, because I am Hank Marvin. Air fryer's out. Got some chicken dippers. Solely because I want chicken wraps. Got to be healthier than pizza and chips, really, hasn't it? The taste test. Why am I so scared? <laughs> look, look. Oh, wow. Mm. Mmm. It's actually a really, really nice park. You can see the bridge going to sky over there. The food was amazing. The washing up's done. I've made myself a cup of tea. I think we should go for a little walk. I'm thinking we should go and see if we can get around that. Look how crystal clear the water is. It's just beautiful. Paddle boarding lock, maybe? Look at the size of the oysters you get up here. It's insane. I've seen herons. Otters, everything. No dolphins yet though. I've not really found much. I'm currently now walking along the sea. I'm dying to see like dolphins or basking sharks. Anything like that would be absolutely amazing. Minky whales uh, off the top of Nice, Co uh, nice Point. I can't wait to get up there on Sky. Trust me to park directly over the road from a shop. I've not seen a shop for 200 miles. And lo and behold, boom. Is that a seal? Uh, yeah, I parked directly over the road from one. I've just seen that little mass of land and there was like a rock on the side. The tide seems to be going out, the water level's dropping and I just thought it was a seal. Oh, there's another war memorial thing over there. It's a shame I can't get in, all the gates are locked. I wouldn't mind having a look at that. Eh, let's hope it's open tomorrow. But it'd be nice to have a little nosy at that. It's amazing how many miles this dubbed out community thermos mug thing has actually done with me. <laughs> oh, there's a cave in the bottom of that rock face. I wonder if the big bad wolf lives under there. Oh, is that Nessie's house? I thought if there's going to be seals, they're bound to be there, but I can't really see any. I will see some wildlife on this adventure. It's half 11 at night and it's only just starting to get dark, but the rain started coming down. Hopefully that clears by the morning though. Voyager Adventure van blinds, they're up on the window. Everything's all sorted. I hope you had a good summer solstice. I'm off to bed. Tune in next time where we're going to be terrorising the Isle of Skye. I hope it lives up to what my expectations are.